Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode number 21 of the After Ascension podcast. My name is Todd. Thank you very much for joining me. I am recording this at 946 on June 24th, 2020. And let's see if I can get it done without disturbing the family that's asleep in the house. I'm going to leave my phone on. And if it starts going off, you know that it's somebody telling me to be quiet. But uh, I'm going to push through anyway. And the funny thing about having a kid is that your perception of time totally changes. And I'm not sure if that's, you know, related to the kid or if there's something else going on. But I swear that time is just different now. And it's like speeding by, but at the same time, not existent at all. I feel like I'm doing a lot, getting a lot done, being productive, but at the same time, not doing anything. And just between taking care of the baby, working 12-hour shifts, and now starting to go to the gym again, it almost takes a little bit more focus to reset myself and get re-engaged on what it is I want to accomplish and what it is I want to get done. But the good news is that there is progress being made for the YouTube channel. I've got a lot of new stuff going on. I've been talking about it for a little bit now. I do have a new mic that has arrived. I've got a new camera that has arrived and I'm getting it all set up and nice. So if you like this podcast, you're going to start hearing a lot more from me, like it or not. And I'm really excited for the new chapter. So thank you all for the encouragement. Thank you guys for the emails and the kind words and the well wishes. It has all built me up to the point where I can take this next step and be confident in doing it. So I just wanted to let you know that you're partially responsible for creating this monster, but luckily this monster is of the light and on a mission and willing to do dirty, nasty things to get this job done. Because I don't know if you've checked, but it's 2020 and the lights are on and everybody's watching. And it's funny how the consciousness on this planet takes a shift when the entertainment takes a break. When that distraction is taken away, the focus of the masses sort of shifts to who's doing the dirty deeds that shouldn't be. And don't get me wrong, I love movies, I love sports, I love video games, I love competition, I love the test of will, the test of strength. I love seeing how far these bodies can be pushed and what they're capable of, and nothing will ever change that. And it's exciting to see things that are going on because we've been waiting a really long time for these shifts to start showing themselves on the surface. And some people took the last podcast as me meaning that you should just ignore the external world completely. And if that's how it came across, that's fine. But what I'm trying to say is don't get engaged like you're some asleep normal person in the population. What you should be doing is focusing on shifting your perspective from inside looking out to an outside looking in one. So what are the ETs watching what's going on here thinking about what's happening? Are they all engaged in the drama? Are they all worrying about how things are going to unfold and caught up in the deception of the darkness? Absolutely not because they've seen it before. They know how it's going to unfold. They're not bound by the linear perception of time as we are. And the funny thing about that is it means that the outcome is already known and that there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to stress over. And you should share that same knowingness that is so present in the reality that they exist in. And if you can maintain that galactic state of mind, you're connecting to an accelerated timeline on your own personal journey. And that's important because when you succeed, I succeed. And that's never been more true than it is now. And the truth is that the ascension process is just simply a game of removing filters. The filters that were installed immediately from the moment you first opened your eyes to everything that you consumed and were conditioned to believe and think from that point forward. So I'm gonna ask you a question and I want you to take this question very seriously. And I want you to leave this podcast and move forward with a clearer understanding on what you need to do to be able to get to where you wanna go. So if you can, 
find yourself a quiet place tonight before you go to sleep or in your meditation, in the shower, whatever the case may be. Let your team gather around you and ask, what filters do I have remaining? And please show me how to find the space to remove them. And if you're saying to yourself, well, I don't have any filters, I don't have any work left to do, well, that's an enormous filter right there. There's always work to be done. The master is never finished. Everybody's got something to work on. That's not the issue. The issue is that there are some filters that are way bigger than anything else. And the biggest ones are lack of self-worth, trust issues, childhood trauma. Maybe you were bullied in school. Maybe you've got some daddy issues. Maybe you've got some fear stuck in your field that needs to be cleared. Maybe you've had some rough past lives that you're still working on. Because that energy does remain with you and it's important to remember that. How are your dreams? Pay very close attention to your dreams. If you have a bad dream and you just sort of shrug it off, well, your team has no choice but to bring that dream right back up to you. And it's going to remain with you until you use your intent to clear it. Always take the time to process your dreams because it's a message no matter how obscure they seem. And what old souls are being asked to do at this time is to use their education to get their team involved. Understand all the different multidimensional parts of you and start giving them instructions on what to do for you. They work for you, straight up. They don't wanna be worshiped. They don't wanna be looked as being above you. What they've been doing for you over the course of all of these years is normalizing their presence to you. So that one day everything would come together and all aspects of you would be firing on all cylinders. So if you find yourself stuck in a place where you're constantly asking for help, you know, um, where should I go? What should I do? Who should I talk to? What should I say? How is this going to play out? What will happen if I do this? The only feedback you're going to get is, I don't know, you tell us. You take the lead. You're the creator. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? And when you get caught in that loop, it feels like you're not getting any feedback at all. As if you're not communicating or being heard by your guides. And it creates the feeling of just spinning in circles. But if you're able to slow down, take a step back, and tell yourself that I am the creator of this reality, all of these multidimensional parts of me are here to facilitate my creation. They are here to honor my free will, whatever it may be. And in realizing that, you fully take your power back and take on the position of the I am. Meaning that your dialogue shifts from I want, I need to I am. I am healthy. I am successful. I am a communicator. I am a teacher. I am worthy of love. I am deserving of a partner that meets my standards. I am always in the right place at the right time. I exist in a reality that fully reflects the magnificent being that I am. How powerful is that? Such a small shift is going to be the catalyst for everything you want going forward. And there is no being in existence that could ever tell you you're not. You're not a teacher. You're not a creator. You are not in the right place at the right time. Nobody has that right. That's not how this works. And all you have to do to get there is release everything that you are not. You are not pain. You are not suffering. You are not struggle. You are not disconnected. You are not alone. You are not under the influence of any energies that would attempt to deceive you, no matter how well they're constructed, no matter what their purpose is, benevolent or not. And when you get to that space, you can take a breath and you're just walking with angels all day long. 
and suddenly any situation that you were in that was hurting your heart is powerless against you because you've risen above it. And finally the plan starts to come together. And I'll tell you what, the only thing that's going to interest you is helping your family here see the same thing and nothing will warm your heart like holding space for others to do the same and to see what you've seen. And I'll be here to tell you I told you so. And I hope that day comes because I know it means that you got to where you want to go, where you deserve to go. And together we'll sit back and smile because so many others think that the world is burning and things are getting so much worse. But we know better. We know that out of the ashes will come something even more beautiful than we ever imagined. Something that's worth waiting for and... I truly believe that, and not a soul in existence can tell me otherwise. Anyway, let me go back a little bit. I want to talk to you guys about what's going on in Dreamtime right now. And I know me personally, my experience has been all over the place. I went through a stretch there where I probably had a nightmare every other night, which is a lot of fun. Um, I've had a lot of lucid dreams where I'm walking on a beach with white sand and crystal clear water something i imagine 5d earth will look like after i don't know a few thousand years have passed and humanity gets its shit together and the reason i bring this up is because i just want to say if you are having nightmares make sure that you don't kick yourself out of them and in fact that's a great opportunity to become lucid and whenever i become lucid in a dream i don't change the environment even if it's the most scary, horrific scenario I can possibly think of. I just go with it. And in turn, as a reward for doing that, in my experience, is you're going to get a very lucid dream in a location so beautiful that you can barely bring it back with you when you wake up. So if you do find yourself in a nightmare, embrace it. Know that it means that work is being done, that things are being cleared for you. And remember that everything in this process is always a give and take. Um, what's that thing? Every action gets an equal and opposite reaction. Uh, something like that. But in the days ahead, remember that there's an acceleration taking place. And that at times can be very uncomfortable. But keep your eye on the prize. And remember that the family's here with you. And you are loved beyond measure. And don't forget it. Good night, my family. Namaste.